Good. I appreciated listening to the various brothers deliver lessons this month. Uh, the range of topics combined with a glimpse into each brother's lived experience was uplifting. Courage is contagious. And as I listened between the lines, I heard testimonies of brokenness, despite that brokenness, a desire to live for Christ. You may notice that I am wearing a t-shirt that shows my brokenness. Yes, it is true that growing up, I was often picked last in gym class. For a little guy living in a broken, violent home, this reality was made even more excruciating. And while I disagree with Mike from his sermon last week that he is not a polished speaker, because I feel he is a very polished speaker, and his Alabama swagger kind of punctuates that, <laughs> My heart championed his brother who stood up for the kids being picked on during the football scrimmage, which he noted in his lesson, because I was one such kid. Recently, I attended a weekend intensive workshop, and as a therapist, I greatly enjoy these retreats. as inner work is great fun for me. Holly does not share my sentiments about weekend growth retreats. <laughs> However, when I've been able to convince her to attend intensives, uh, we often gain a great deal from them. At this retreat, we spent one day reliving our boyhood, catching frogs, harnessing our childhood superheroes, playing various games, and competing in competitive sports. As we were led to the basketball court, I was unsure what to expect. Four captains were selected and they began to pick teams. As I stood in the crowd waiting with anticipation to be picked, my heart sank when, true to form, I was picked near last. Not last last, <laughs> uh, but near last. On our teams, we began warming up, shooting hoops for tryouts. Each captain had to unselect two people who would not play on the team. I was excited, doing my best to sink hoops hustling, and showing up to the challenge. But alas, the captain, with the sweep of his arm, noted, I'm feeling it with these men over here, but not over here. And with that, I was benched not to play. I was filled with shame, anger, embarrassment and resentment, all while keeping my composure, while inwardly bowing, I would root against them to lose. <laughs> <laughs> Which they did. After medals were awarded and the event was over, we broke off into our small groups to process our experiences and our emotions. Walking up to my small group, I noticed one of the program facilitators, an older gentleman, slightly out of shape, a couple of inches shorter than I am, wearing a shirt that read, I was picked last in gym class. 
At that moment, my shame, anger, embarrassment, resentment were transformed into something else. It was converted into connection. And suddenly, at that moment, with a poof, being picked last in gym class was cool. <laughs> at least it was for me. I loved the shirt so much that I ordered it myself, but I added 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am well content with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties, for Christ's sake, for when I am wrong, when I am weak, and wrong, then I am strong. Amen. How do we become content with our weaknesses? Paul notes that we boast about them. Mm -hmm. Gladly. We drag them into the light where Satan can no longer use them against us. And through Christ, we become strong because we are no longer relying on ourselves, but on God. Amen. Paul wasn't a fan of his weaknesses, his thorns in the flesh. He called them messengers of Satan to torment, to torment him in 2 Corinthians 12, 7 and 8. Because of the support passing greatness of the revelations for this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. Concerning this, I implored the Lord three times that it might leave me. In the book of Galatians 4.13, Paul later notes, but you know that it was because of a bodily illness that I preached the gospel to you for the first time. Mm -hmm. Paul was sick, and that illness somehow became the reason for his opportunity to tell about Jesus. I have also immensely enjoyed Chris's sermons on exposing our Pharisees. For me, the message is clear. We all have one. But again, acknowledging this is where we become justified. In Luke 18, 13, 14, but the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you, this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. Amen. I met with Ron, Wade, and Chris a couple of months back and shared with them advanced copies of my book which will be released this October 23rd. Chris will soon share a sermon on the topic in my book. My book is titled Walk by Faith, Not by Sexuality, a compassionate guide to sexual identity, religious integrity, and inner peace. I don't share this for the exposure. I have several platforms for that. But instead, I share this because you're my family. Amen. And I want you to know.
and the love and support Holly and I have gained from the brethren in this congregation have strengthened me to boast about my weaknesses. Even the most humiliating one of all that I was picked last in gym class. I appreciate everyone's attention. In a moment, we'll sing a song of invitation. <clears throat> if you haven't obeyed Christ's calling to be baptized, we could coordinate that after the service. Filling the basin with water takes no time at all. I can still remember the preacher saying after I came up from the water of my baptism, every angel in heaven was singing. Yes, sir. Which felt so true. Talk now. Would you please stand and sing? <clears throat> 